In today's biased news, European economies buckle under high inflation, the crisis in Sudan deepens, and Brazil unveils a plan to combat illegal mining in the Amazon. High inflation continues in Britain and other European countries as prices outpace corrective measures. As of this week, the Bank of England has failed to ease the inflationary pressure on staple goods despite a general drop in the inflation rate. With a fall of just 0.9%, economists predict long-lasting inflation as prices remain unchanged or, in the case of services, continue to increase. Despite lackluster performance, the Bank of England will push on with their interest rate hike campaign, ruining the millions of Britons with loans they'll be unable to repay. Despite these minor drops, Britain continues to have one of the highest inflation rates, outpaced only by Iceland and Austria as of June. Minor decreases in fuel prices were met with rising sugar prices at 55%, while transport insurance costs were up 50%. Despite the chronic need for wage increases, bank economists continued to peddle the wage inflation spiral myth, blaming workers for the inflation caused primarily through corporate profit-seeking. As long as capitalist economics are allowed to dominate, the interests of regular working people will continue to be sidelined for the profits of a few, as the majority of the population is punished for demanding the most minuscule assistance so that they can remain fed and housed. The DPRK has publicly announced that US soldier Travis King crossed into North Korea from the south on July 18th. State media reports that King is seeking refuge due to what he claims is, quote, inhuman maltreatment and racial discrimination in the US military and society. It's well documented that racism is a systemic problem in U.S. society, and touches all parts of American life, including the military, so the claim should not come as a surprise to most observers. As usual, U.S. media claims the statement isn't authentic, and urges that Americans disregard this most recent defection. The U.S. has not classified King as a prisoner of war, with officials believing he crossed intentionally, which should tell you something about the U.S.'s claims. The United Nations has issued a warning about the dire situation in Sudan, where more than a million people have fled to neighboring countries due to four months of war between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary RSF. This conflict has caused severe humanitarian crises, including food shortages and a lack of life-saving health care. The situation in the capital, Khartoum, is devastating, with ethnically driven attacks exacerbating the crisis. The war has displaced over 3.4 million people within Sudan, in addition to the more than a million who have sought refuge in neighboring countries. Sudan is facing an electricity blackout, and efforts to negotiate a ceasefire have stalled, leaving humanitarian agencies struggling to provide aid amid insecurity and bureaucratic obstacles. Donald Trump's fourth criminal indictment, this time in Georgia, has sparked questions about its impact on his push for the Republican Party's 2024 nomination. Despite facing charges related to efforts to manipulate the 2020 election results, Trump remains the frontrunner for the Republican nomination. Analysts believe the indictment might actually solidify his support among his base, as many of his supporters view these cases as politically motivated. The indictments have not significantly affected Trump's standing in polls, and if no action is taken to bar him from running again, this is all just political theater, and the Democrats have effectively handed the presidency to the Republicans. Germany is set to unveil a draft bill proposing the legalization of recreational cannabis use. The health minister will present the bill after discussions with the German cabinet. Supporters within the coalition government aim to legalize cannabis this year, but are likely to face opposition from conservatives. The proposed law would allow individuals over 18 to possess up to 25 grams of cannabis and cultivate up to three plants for personal use. Cannabis clubs would be permitted to distribute the drug, but its consumption would not be allowed within the clubs or within a 250 meter radius. Critics, including some lawmakers and officials, express concerns about the potential for increased consumption, risks, and side effects associated with legalization. They also doubt claims that legalization would significantly reduce the black market for cannabis. The bill is scheduled to be debated in the lower house of parliament after the summer recess. And in positive news of the day, the left-wing Brazilian government has launched a mission to combat illegal gold mining in the Amazon rainforest. Helicopters from two environmental agencies are targeting illegal mining camps that are causing environmental damage. When they locate these camps, the agents set fire to all mining equipment and fuel. So far, the operation has neutralized 43 dredges, 33 excavators, and 30 pump engines in its initial phase. The mission is not only about protecting the environment, but also about addressing the social and economic impacts of illegal mining, 
which enriches criminals and perpetuates an unsustainable model. The ongoing operation is part of the Brazilian government's efforts to end deforestation and protect indigenous territories and conservation areas from illegal activities. That's all for today. We'll be back day after tomorrow with more news. If you'd like to see longer episodes with more in-depth analysis, consider becoming a patron so we can grow and expand.